I think I'm going to lay the points with the Celtics, which I hate these big numbers, but I get it. Did the Cavaliers inspire anything in you watching them against the Magic? The Magic are your classic, we'll grind it out, we'll play some defense, we got some talent, but we need to add some more offensive talent. We'll be better over time. They have a budding in superstar in Paolo Boncaro, obviously. But the Cavaliers, I feel like if I felt better about the Cavaliers in this series than it would have been after they handled their business against the Magic. They did not need to go seven games against the Orlando Magic. And remember, whenever the Cavaliers were on the road in this series, they didn't look good at all. So now they're coming off this Game 7 series, or seven-game series against the Magic. Now they have to go on the road to Boston. The Celtics are rested. The Celtics just got finished handling the Heat and Boston 24-18-2 and two against the number, at least during the regular season at the Garden. I feel like the Cavaliers get overwhelmed here. I would lay it with Boston. Big number, but I'd lay it. I'll say this about the Celtics. When they've been big favorites in this recent stretch, they've covered just about every single time. Uh, looking back to that Heat series, they won every game with the exception of one, and that's the one game they didn't cover a monster stre- uh, spread because the spreads in those games were 14.5, 14, 9.5, 10.5, and 13.5. And 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 All of those games, with the exception of the one they lost, were absolute blowouts. So usually Boston is pretty good at covering these big numbers. I will say Cleveland probably presents a better threat than the Miami Heat, but it's also built into the number. Uh, some injuries you should be aware of if you're betting on this game. We know Kristaps Porzingis continues to be out. Maybe that presents a problem against this Cleveland team that's pretty long, tall, and athletic down low. But Jared Allen, their center, questionable tonight uh, with a rib injury. So just a couple things to uh, be aware of. On the other side, in the Western Conference, we have the Mavericks taking on the Thunder. Uh, the Thunder laying three and a half and a total of 216 and a half. Jenks, uh, what do we think happens here? I kind of want to grab the Mavs here in the points. I'm like you. You made a good point earlier, which is, do I really want to bet on a game one in these series? I like to get a feel for it first. Like, what am I looking at? How do these teams look? What sort of series are we going to get? And... Certainly, you can't extrapolate an entire series based on one game, but I like to get a feel for it. And the Thunder were moneymakers. There's no question about it this season. But at the end of the year, Vegas sort of caught up to Oklahoma City, and they didn't cover as much as they normally do. I just feel like the Mavs come in here and keep this close. I would lean Mavs grabbing the points, and they have more playoff experience. They were great on the road this season. And I know there's only so much of the regular season you can apply to the postseason, but the Mavericks were the best team against the spread when playing on the road. The Thunder are rested, but are they too rested? We talked about that earlier in the show. I would lean Mavs plus a three and a half. Yeah, I think I would too, just because I certainly think they have a good chance to win this game outright. And when you think a team has a good chance to win a game outright, you would take the points. Oklahoma City, if you're looking at all the regular season trends, certainly looks like the play here at home. 35-8 and eight straight up as favorites, 51-14. and 14. But sometimes I think it's a little different in the postseason. Like you said, Dallas has been great at covering numbers on the road all season long. And plus, Oklahoma City has not played a game since April 29th. It feels like a very long layoff, which we know in professional sports, Mm -hmm. usually some time off to rest and recover is a good thing. But this is a young Oklahoma City team. Feels like they didn't need the rest in the first place. And now it feels like maybe they're out of the rhythm a little bit to start this game. Uh, So I feel like Oklahoma City looks like the play on paper, but I'm going to stay away simply because of the layoff. Jenks, let's take a look at some of the futures markets and see if we can find some value. We've got MVP on the American League and the National League side. We've got Cy Young uh, in the National League and American League. So let's start with MVP. Uh, In the American League, we've got Juan Soto and Gunnar Henderson. The favorites, Juan Soto plus 250. Big surprise there. Somebody who hits a lot of home runs. Had a great start to the season. And also, he plays for a big market team in the Yankees. Gunnar Henderson, also off to a great start. But he plays in Baltimore. Jenks, do you think Juan Soto deserves to be this short of a favorite when it's only May? No way. Not even close. Wouldn't you take a shot 
on Shohei, it's six to one. Sorry, I'm looking at NL, but I'm just thinking about MVP awards in general. Like, if I'm betting AL or the MVP markets, like, I can't believe you can get Shohei at six to one right now. I know we're talking about AL MVP, but that Juan Soto at plus 250. No, it's too early in the season for the odds to be this short. And I understand why, because mm-hmm. they will fluctuate. But if I'm going to go plus 250 on any player who is the favorite, then I'm going to do it towards the end of the season where, okay, I'm not getting maybe the value I want, but also there is a stronger chance that they're going to win the award because there's fewer games remaining. Yeah, I think it's strange that Gunnar Henderson actually has more home runs than Juan Soto, but yet it's Juan Soto that is the favorite. And I understand it's not just home runs, but we've seen in the past, home runs matter. The sexy stat matters when it comes to some of these awards. So I think a lot of it is trying to project if Gunnar Henderson can keep this up. We know what Juan Soto is. He is one of the best pure hitters in all of baseball. So I think we can say, okay, this is not an anomaly. So I think maybe that's why Juan Soto is your favorite. Uh, You look at Mike Trout. He's one of the guys that's leading uh, the leagues in home runs, but he's hurt. So you take him out of the conversation as well. So, Jenks, you're making a case for Shohei. And I think from a value standpoint, this is a good one. But Mookie Betts, what he is doing on the same team, I think from a narrative standpoint, is why he is your favorite at plus 140 over in the National League. Not only is Mookie Betts putting up monster numbers, hitting over 350, he also changed positions. And we were talking to Eric Kratz the other day of Foul Territory TV, and he made this point that uh, not only did Mookie change positions, he changed positions to a premium position in shortstop, which is not an easy move to make. This is somebody who's involved in a lot of plays every single time somebody makes connection uh, Mm -hmm. with the baseball bat. So I think it's really impressive, and I do think the writers will take that into account. Would I bet him at plus 140? Probably not. I think you need to wait and see if you can get a better price here. But I think the biggest challenge to Shohei is probably on his own team. It's true. But this is incredible value on Shohei Otani. And certainly the position change with Mookie and that narrative is a big deal. I get that. It should be taken into account. Defense matters. But look across the board right now. Who has the higher average? It's Shohei. He's batting 370. Who has more home runs? Shohei, 11 to 6. They're both tied with 27 RBI. Who has the higher OPS? It's Shohei. So, yes, take the transition to a different position on the field into account. But if you look at the numbers, Shohei is as good, if not better, than Mookie Betts in a lot of different categories, and you're getting the value of a 6-1 to bet, I'd be all over Shohei here.